Communities don't exist without water. It, it's really the most basic thing. It's, water's more basic than power or internet. Without water, communities don't exist. I'm Ron Foggin, I'm the city manager. I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the city of Kingman. Kingman is a town of just over 33,000 people. We have a support community around us of another 25 to 30,000. So we're really a community of 55 to 60,000. We live a lot off of tourism as our economy. We also have a large amount of industrial uh, businesses at our airport, um, which really is surprising to people. The primary concern for water is because we live off of underground water, nobody has a camera that can take a picture of the water and you know exactly how much there is, where it is. It's a finite resource and we're not sure how much recharge happens. The ultimate issue is that if we can't supply water and to people, then we don't have a community. So that's really the concern is how, how, you know, what is our water supply, how long will it last, and what, what other steps do we take? The sustainability of our water supply out of the Wallapai Aquifer continues to be an unknown because of the amount of corporate farming that has been cropping up in the, in the basin. There's no state requirements for any farming activity to meter or report water usage. In and of itself, that doesn't sound terribly bad until you start looking at the wells that are being put in by these corporate farming operations. A city well that supplies a huge amount of water to our, to our residents and our customers can, you know, our biggest wells are 2,500 gallons per minute maybe really push 2,800 gallons per minute. We know wells that are being put in by corporate farming that'll do 3,000 gallons a minute. And they don't have to report any of that draw. So if we don't know the amount of water that's being pulled out, then we don't possibly can't predict how long that water will last. And most recent modeling numbers that we were, we've been shown or we've done with USGS show us with good practices, farming practices, and the city continuing to do their part in conservation, you know, 150 years plus. If all the, all the land that's available for farming was actually put into farmland, trees and, and alfalfa and that kind of thing, 50 years. Right? So there's dramatically different numbers, and that's all based on whether or not we know what people are taking out of the ground. I would say that for us, we've taken the approach of we're gonna be the example and we're doing, we're doing recharge well, where we're gonna put more than a million gallons a day back into the aquifer. We're doing dry wells in an effort to capture runoff water, storm water, and put it back in the ground. The debates at the, legis at the state legislature have definitely opened people's eyes to the problem, not just, in, not just in our groundwater aquifer, but across the state. Any community that lives entirely off an aquifer and doesn't have rules in place is at risk of not having groundwater sometime in the future. Yeah. The last thing we want to say to our residents is, sorry, the water coming out of your tap is not drinkable. Right? It's the worst case scenario. And that's the best thing that the legislature could do is just have some rules. And so legislature, we need their help. Uh, we need their understanding. The thing that we're asking the state legislature to do is pass laws that will require people to be accountable for the water that they use, no matter what industry they're in. And that would include agricultural activities so that we have the ability to control who, how much water is taken out, that it's fair and it's equitable for, for everybody.